Driver's Ed was a popular class at my high school. There was so much to learn. Parallel parking and all those signs. Quick, is yield an upside down or regular triangle? Upside down, of course. But Driver's Ed of the future may be a short class because of one disruptive invention. I mean, how long does it take to teach get in the car, now read a book? This is the garage. This is uh, where everything is designed and built right here. In 2014, correspondent Ali Ward met innovator Kyle Vogt, who built a computer-controlled self-driving interface for cars made after 2012. He called it Cruise, and it was acquired by General Motors that same year. Good to see you, Matt. You too, Mo. I cruised back to the Henry Ford Museum to talk with the curator of transportation, Matt Anderson about the future of autonomous cars. Welcome to Cruise. Yeah. It just welcomed us. Yeah, so that's it's telling us it's it, everything's good and we're ready to go. So I'm going to give it a shot here and see what happens. All right. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> it's haunted with science. Yeah, it's just making minor corrections as it noticed us drifting to the left or to the right. And we are going down the freeway at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, we're cruising. <laughs> this is one of those stories where we were in on the ground floor. Afterwards, this company sold for, I think, about a billion dollars. Yeah, that's a success story by any measure. Does that surprise you? It doesn't, because there was a time in the mid-teens when uh, all of a sudden autonomous cars were clearly the wave of the future. And if you hadn't been in developing them from the beginning, then the easiest way to get ahead was to purchase an upstart company that had been developing cars for a while. That's just what GM did with cruise automation. I have to tell you, I'm not that excited about autonomous cars. Yeah, we have discovered that autonomous vehicles can perform beautifully in certain circumstances, certainly when they're on test tracks, maybe on interstate highway driving where there's a limited number of maneuvers going on at any one time. But boy, you put them out in the real world and there's an infinite number of things that can happen. Is this too good to be true? I don't think so. I think the timeline was certainly overly optimistic. I mean, some folks thought by 2020, we would have self-driving cars out in the world in some appreciable measure. Obviously, that didn't happen. It'll come, but I think it's going to be decades, not years. Is there really a need for this? You know, I think there is a credible need for it when you think about the number of accidents we have on American roads. But also, you know, there are people who aren't able to drive themselves. Mobility is a real issue in this country because so much of it is built around driving and autonomous cars could solve a lot of that problem. You make a good case. Of course, this leads to the perennial and I'd say tired question. When are we getting a flying car? Well, I hope when the flying cars come, they will be autonomous because it's challenge enough to drive here on the ground.